All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Conroe ISD School Safety and Security meeting. Today is June 2nd. Thank you all for joining us Just as, uh, to respect your time. We're gonna jump right into our agenda today. Um, our first item up for um, approval is the minutes uh, from the School Safety and Security meeting back from March 30th. I believe you all received a copy of those. So I would uh, accept a motion to approve those. Mr. Moore would move approval as presented. Thank you, Mr. Moore. And a second. Mr. McCord would make okay. a second. Thank you, Mr. McCord. Uh, any uh, discussion or conversation changes that need to be made? All right, all those in favor? Uh, you can just make some type of hand motion. Actually, well, the easiest thing will be, is there anyone that doesn't uh, approve those? Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to move in now to receiving a lot of information. We're going to let Ethan Barton drive most of this meeting, but um, just want to take the opportunity to say thank you. You think of this committee um, for so long, uh, unfortunately, but for so long in school safety, we, we, we would talk or think about things like mass shootings as really the, the focus. When you said school safety, that was the first thing everyone thought about, certainly uh, in today's world. And as we've, uh, I believe, very successfully um, worked our way through a pandemic, we now view school safety as a much broader term. And I think that's uh, will be reflected in today's agenda items as we see uh, many different things that we uh, we've always talked about internally, but just to the outside world, uh, maybe now being more aware of what all is entailed in school safety. So, uh, Ethan, I will go ahead and, and hand it over to you for item two, receive information about, provide input regarding the 2020-2021 campus and facility audits. And that's correct. And this is where, um, at this point in time, for the 2021 campus and uh, facility safety audits, excuse me, I'm going to let Michael Ferguson take over that. Um, we've mentioned this a little bit before, but nobody's met Michael, so we'll be able to do that now. So we'll let him introduce himself and then move forward regarding um, our facility audits. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me just fine. Uh, Michael Ferguson, school safety specialist. Uh, I do the uh, campus uh, safety audits. Uh, we are uh, last year, 1920 school year, we finished the first rotation of three, uh, three year rotation. So this year, 2021, 2020, 2021, we did the uh, started a new rotation, which included district facilities, uh, Conroe High School feeder zone and Caney Creek feeder zone. We waited to do the, the schools until the spring semester to try to get the uh, campuses settled into this uh, wacky year that we had. Um, hey, Michael, can you can you give everybody just your background a little bit just so they know kind of what you bring, what knowledge you bring into the job? Sure. Uh, I've been an athletic trainer for 23 years. Uh, and then I was uh, I opened up College Park High School in 2005, was there to 2014. And then I moved over as an assistant principal to Knox Junior High, was there for four years and then moved into this position last year or last school year in January. So this is uh, my first full year. So I've been doing this for a year and a half. Uh, learning on the fly, but uh, a lot of it uh, is uh, stuff that I was looking for anyway, whenever I was in my other position. So, um, so uh, moving on to uh, what we look for in our safety audits. It's an ongoing process that uh, we aim to look for hazards or anything, threats, vulnerabilities that would, uh, endanger the you know anybody on the campus or our property our school property uh, we wanted to have a safe uh, secure and uh, healthy environment for our kids and our teachers to work in our staff to work in um, what does an audit consist of where well, there's an, a safety audit team uh, usually it consists of me and a uh, assistant principal or associate principal on a campus uh, sometimes uh, Ethan Martin also attends with me uh, sometimes there is uh, the uh, principal of the campus will work with me as well as we walk the campus and look at things. Uh, we involve teachers, nurses, um, other members of the school campus uh, through uh, question and answer sessions. I might walk into a classroom uh, where a teacher is, you know, the classroom's empty, the kids may be at lunch or whatever, whatever you, you know, what have you. 
and I'll ask them questions about uh, general safety concerns they may have, about the MEOP, how they access it. If there was a drill, how would they uh, go about doing that? So get information that way. We also uh, conduct intruder assessments, um, and that is done. Uh, right now, I can do them because a lot of people don't know me, especially up here in the north part of the uh, district. But um, basically what we try to do is we try to gain access to the school, uh, walk around the school, usually get there about 20, 30 minutes before the audit happens and try to find a way to get in. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. And if that doesn't happen, what I do is I let myself in. I take my badge, put it away, and I just start to walk the campus to see if anybody's going to stop me. Uh, and then if they do, uh, I, I document how long I was in the building before somebody noticed me and, and who that was, and then kind of give them a little uh, at a boy type uh, it, or at a girl email, uh, just saying a good job for stopping uh, somebody that was in your building that didn't have a badge on um, or didn't look like they were supposed to be there. Um, also, we go over and we re review the uh, MEOP with them, which is the uh, multi-hazard emergency operating procedure. Just to ask them general questions about uh, where where they can find information. Uh, do they have uh, evacuation routes uh, located where the kids can see them, and where uh, you know, and if, if they have all their information and materials they need for that. Um, at the end of that, we do report the findings to them. But I, you know, as I said, most of them are walking with us or walking with me. So they're taking all the notes that they need. But at the end, I always give them a report. That way they can uh, go back whenever they're doing um, uh, faculty meetings or whatever, and they can touch on this stuff with, the, with their staff uh, so they can work on correcting anything that we find that may need to be corrected. And then of course, during the process, if there's any corrections that need to be made that can be made while we're there, uh, we go ahead and get that done as well. Um, things that most common that we're looking for when we do this, uh, you know, items stored in mechanical rooms, especially in front of stuff that may need to be used or get to if there's a, a, an emergency or uh, work needs to be done. Items stacked too high, uh, which would block the sprinkler systems. Uh, daisy chaining of electrical cords, uh, personal belongings that are unsecured and security of knives and other sharp instruments. And this is something that's come up in the last two years that we uh, went to address and uh, uh, along with CTE, they did a wonderful job. And next year, we're going to implement a, uh, uh, a way to check things in and out so uh, we can keep an account of all those uh, knives and sharp objects that may be used in the culinary or cooking class. Uh, here are a few examples. I was asked to put some examples in there, and I, I put them in there. Hopefully, y'all can see them. This is mechanical rooms and items stored in mechanical rooms. And again, these five things that I'm going to go over are just some of the most common things that we see. Uh, that are that we can correct uh, pretty easily. As you can see in the picture on your left, um, those are uh, panels that they can be accessed because those things are on wheels, but ideally you don't want anything in front of that. And, and the pictures on the right are some mechanical rooms at other campuses that, uh, as you can see, are empty or there is nothing uh, you know, blocking the uh, way to those uh, um, units that they would might need to work on. The next one is, uh, you know, the storage in classrooms, uh, stacking things too high. Uh, it's actually 18 inches is what the fire code says, but you have a, a, um, automatic sprinklers. But in the district, not all of our campuses to this point that I'm aware of have that. So we go ahead and say 24 inches just to make it easy for everybody to follow. Uh, as you can see on the pictures on the left, those are all the way to the top. Um, again, that's an easy fix got to take that stuff down and if you look on the pictures on the right that stuff stacked pretty high but it is enough clearance for the automatic sprinkler systems to work in those areas um, electrical cords you know daisy chaining and what we talk about when we talk about daisy chaining that's surge protectors that are plugged into each other either to create more outlets or to extend it far farther the plugs farther so it can be reached um, and as you can see in the picture on the left there, uh, the, the uh, surge protector on the right is actually plugged into the surge protector on the left. Again, that, that can be fixed fairly easy. And on the right, there's an example of a couple of computers plugged into one surge protector. Obviously the cables could be a little bit more organized, but it's um, the way that we would like to see it whenever we're on campuses. 
And uh, another one we have here is security of belongings, personal belongings. As you see on the picture on the left, right there in front of that green organizer underneath that table is a uh, is the backpack or purse type thing that the uh, teacher is using and it's out in the open. Um, number of reasons why we don't want that out there. They may have, I mean, stuff can get stolen from it or they may have stuff like medications or something like that in there, which a kid could get to. Uh, the examples on the right show two desks that you can't see their personal belongings because they're in the cabinets that are directly behind their chairs. And the reason I know that is because part of the things that I do when I go into those classrooms and there's a teacher there, I ask them, where do you secure your personal belongings? And they showed me on that particular case. Um, the last thing that we were looking at are knives and other sharp instruments and how they're secured. The picture on the left, they actually do secure them. They put that little tray and they lock it up at the end of the day. However, they put it out and, and kids come and use what they need to and replace it. Um, on the right, as you can see, that's a, that's a culinary class where everything is kind of stored. And you can't see the knives, but on that shelf to your right, there is trays there. On the far, I didn't get a good picture of it, but on the far right of that, or far left if you were facing it, the tray has the knives in and they're they're kind of uh, in their particular spot, so you know if one is missing. So that way they can keep track of them. So as I said earlier, the CTE department has worked along with me and Ethan and, and some others of getting a, um, a way to track those, those knives so as they're handed out, they can be tracked and turned back in. Um, and that way we can keep an inventory of all that stuff uh, and make sure that one of those doesn't walk out of the classroom. Um, that pretty much is everything, unless I have uh, any questions regarding uh, the facility safety audits. Uh, and we, we've talked about these before, and overwhelmingly, as a district and campus-wise, we do a really we do a good job. And so, really, those are just the common things that are easily fixed that Mr. Ferguson is going in and looking for. But if, if there's anything that you guys have in regard to input or stuff that you th you believe that Mr. Ferguson needs to be looking for, we would. We would definitely like to know at this point in time or, of course, um, via email or a phone call afterwards. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. All right. If we don't have no input. No input, then we'll move on to item three, receive information, validate existing inventory and replacement schedule regarding personal protective equipment. Yeah, one, one thing or one of the many things that this committee is tasked to do is uh, technically we're supposed to create this list for the personal protective equipment, but there is a clause in there that says that if it's the responsibility of another department, um, and we do, we have a great department that puts this list together and, and has the everything, you know, the, the list and they take care of it and all, but we just need to provide that list to um, the safety committee. And so now Mr. McCord and Mr. Rick Reeves will go through uh, the particulars in regard to our PPE within the district. So good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We are in a far, far better place as we uh, try to mitigate COVID-19 than we were a year ago today. And we're very excited about that. Uh, special salute, one of our committee members, he was the tip of the spear in helping us uh, mitigate COVID-19, have school all year in person and get to where we are today. Uh, she doesn't really need an introduction, but that's Barbara Robertson. So, Barbara, kudos to you. Thank you. We can't say enough good things, and uh, thank you. I do want you to know that uh, we continue to do what is necessary to be prepared for COVID, to mitigate COVID, and to anticipate what happens next. Uh, we're in a good spot. Thanks a lot to the efforts by a lot of people like Barbara and uh, our staff, our nurses, Memorial Herman, the county, uh, St. Luke's, others. Uh, is all they've done to help us to get out vaccinations. Uh, and I appreciate their efforts, Lone Star Family Health. As we go to the next slide, uh, Mr. Martin, we'll just talk about campuses. And on individual campuses, I do want you to know that we had funds allotted this year and monies for campuses to identify exactly what they needed specific to their building and their students and their staff for PPE. I want you to know that we have monies budgeted again for the 2021-2022 school year for that if it's needed again. So monies are available and they will be available as needed. 
Uh, right now, we're looking pretty good. You know, the question out there that everyone has is the uh, length of the vaccination, how long it will work, what do the variants bring to the table, but whatever happens, we're going to be ready for it. So uh, we have PPE, the campuses were able to identify what they needed. And then the district ourselves, we also provided uh, a wealth of PPE for our students and staff across the district, as well as custodial, child nutrition, and other departments. So monies are available for them going, for, going forward as needed, and we'll see how it goes. We think it's going to go well, but just in case, we're going to be ready. So I want to segue and transition to my good friend, Mr. Reeves, who's going to talk a little bit about what uh, the warehouse has done and what they have regarding PPE. Thanks, Chris. As you can see, uh, we distributed quite a bit of different various items. Uh, we received approximately 60 pallets of um, hand sanitizer, masks, gloves uh, from the state last June that we were able to, uh, with the help of Sarah Blakelock, um, secure an offsite warehouse to store those items. Um, as you remember, we opened Suchma Elementary this past fall. So we had to, uh, we had room, all, everything in the warehouse was supplies and getting ready for that uh, when the state called and said, hey, where do you want us to, to take this? So um, Sarah helped us locate that spot. So we were able, we had an offsite PPE warehouse that we managed um, until we could get all the Suchma supplies out. And we distributed all these items here, as you can see, to uh, throughout, the, throughout the district. Um, so quite a bit. Um, and I'm sure uh, we've, we've got a few phone calls says uh, that it's a, campus is saying, okay, we've got more hand sanitizer than we know what to do with. So <laughs> needless to say, it's, it's definitely out there. Um, Ethan, if you wanna go to the next slide, you can see this is some of the state, what we have left of the state. Um, still left over. We still have a couple of pallets of the hand sanitizer. We have some face shields, thermometers, um, some of the gloves and masks. Um, a lot of this, we worked with Barbara's group to get out to their nursing staff and they distributed on the campuses as needed. Um, so this is everything that was, that was free given to us from the state. And then if you go to the next slide, we actually had stuff that we had ordered as well. So um, Mr. McCord sent out a survey to the campuses Few weeks after school started just trying to get some feedback on what they were needing as the kids were coming back um, big things that they were were um, mentioned to us were gloves um, wipes so they could wipe down uh, chromebooks desks everything else uh, we had a few of the sneeze guards uh, some of those and those barriers we sent out that we had ordered earlier on in the summer um, and then the uh, you've probably seen them on the campuses the hand sanitizer stands that are at the, at the entrances so we have refills for those that um, that we work with our maintenance and custodial apartment to get those those taken care of as well. So this is what we still have in inventory. So we still have quite a bit. Um, and as we get requests, a lot of them they'll either email myself or Mr. McCord or the, the warehouse, and we'll make sure that we accommodate those as as needed. Uh, Ethan, if you want to go on the next one, uh, just some more inventory items, uh, some of the K95s. And anytime when Barbara would when Barbara had a need for the nurses, if she they needed more masks. Um, if you all remember, um, there was, we usually were purchasing these from our co-op vendors because it was readily available and, and um, easy for us to make those purchases, legal purchases, um, but those, those vendors started running out. So back in October, we actually awarded a, a, a bid for PPE. We're one of the few districts that did that. So we were able to um, award 120 vendors through that PPE bid. So for us now, whenever we get a request, when Barbara says, hey, we needed you know, 5,000 masks, um, our buyer who oversees that, uh, that particular bid will email a few of those vendors and get a quote, and then we get that quote back, and we're able to, to get those pretty quickly. So within a week to 10 days, we'll get those masks in. So it really helped us out being able to do that and get in those as we needed and getting them in a timely fashion. So as you can see, we still have these items available, and we actually had a donation from uh, still getting calls and donations from companies wanting to give us, uh, we had Home Depot, was it two weeks ago, um, donated we, two pallets of face masks. We had some from Sam's Club a few weeks ago as well. And we've actually turned down a few um, folks that were trying to donate more hand sanitizer because we have more hand sanitizer than I think we're ever gonna, I, I, I actually referred them to Willis and said, hey, you may wanna check with some of the surrounding districts because I think we could probably give, we could probably, take care of all of Montgomery County with the amount of hand sanitizer we still have in stock. So 
Uh, but I think, you know, looking at what we have and going forward, uh, I think we have more than enough to take care of any, any requests. Uh, we have not had to tell anybody, no, we don't have this. Or, you know, with like Mr. McCord had mentioned, we have some funds available. So they're able to purchase them on their own. They have the list of vendors that they can, that they can go through that we've already vetted and they're making them legal purchases and, and uh, being able to take care of everything there. And as you can see too, if they need anything, they can put them through a warehouse request and talk to Barbara's um, team as well. Um, and then we're made, we're letting the campuses know what we have, just like we just showed you guys our inventory there. Um, and then a replacement, um, if we need it, we'll, you know, we have the, the funds set aside if, if we need anything, but I don't really anticipate unless something major happens, knock on wood again, but uh, I think we have more than enough supplies to cover us going into next year. So that's kind of where we are on PPE. Are there any questions, comments, or input of any type regarding PPE going forward? Mr. McCord, I would like to um, say I applaud the district for their efforts. We moved heaven and earth to get PPE when you couldn't find PPE because we were going to protect our staff so that we could open. We did that and we did that successfully. So there are many of people on this call and, and others that really went above and beyond to make sure that we had what we needed to protect our staff so they felt protected so they could come back to work and do what they do and not worry about uh, being sick because they didn't have what they needed to protect themselves. Thanks, Barbara. You know, I just still admire, I still read stories on the internet about districts announcing they're close to being ready to open. And uh, through the efforts of Barbara and uh, the school district and purchasing warehouse, you know, we were able to open many months ago and be successful at it. So thanks to everyone. Any other comments or thoughts? All right, well, we will see what happens. We'll be ready with, for whatever comes. Hopefully no variants uh, come our way, but we will be ready unless there are any other comments. Uh, we'll transition to the next uh, part and you can always reach us at any time via phone call, email, or just let us know. So Dr. Null or I guess Ethan. Yeah, we can go, we can go right to Ethan on the next item. Um, receive information regarding planning and construction, summer campus safety and security upgrades and improvements. So Mr. Foster. That's it. And uh, Mr. Easy Foster, our director of planning and construction is going to take over now um, regarding that. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate you attending this afternoon to hear, hear our update for what we've got going on. What we're seeing here on our screens is a, is a, our plan overall from the 2019 bond referendum. So we've completed uh, 2020. Uh, so those are marked off and we're into 2021 and uh, I've highlighted uh, for this meeting the areas where we're currently working. Uh, so we've got 2021 where we've got Ford Kaufman, Oak Ridge Elementary, Oak Ridge Warehouse, Transportation, Vogel, Haley, the Woodlands Transportation and Testing and Assessment. Uh, we're also got major projects uh, underway which also all include our, uh, our uh, key scopes of work for our safety and security upgrades. Most uh, or all of these projects have a secure vestibule uh, with, when we're finished, we'll have impact resistant film on all the windows that surround the reception area. Uh, we're also upgrading the electronic access control for each of the exterior doors. And in our um, junior highs and our elementary and intermediates, we've got entry and exit alarm systems that allow the doors to be monitored from the reception area with local alarms on the hallways if there is an intruder or a uh, a, uh, an exit, an unauthorized exit on one of the classroom hallways. So those items are actually shown in the two pictures below uh, on a monitor at the reception area so they can be responded to immediately uh, and the reception can see where the issue happens uh, in real time. We're also upgrading our first responder radio antenna systems. That's so the fire and police departments can have full 100% coverage of their radio systems inside all of our buildings. So as we move through the district, uh, when we finish the plan for the 2019 bond referendum, all of our buildings, uh, all of our education buildings will have those first responder radio systems installed and operational. Alongside of that, we're running our local digital radio antenna systems. That's so our local, the district, our the radios our campuses use to communicate. We're cleaning up all the uh, weird dead spots that happens within the structures so that they can communicate locally uh, as well. And a lot of things we're doing are camera and server upgrades at security cameras. Uh, those go hand in hand with the access controls because anytime there's an unauthorized entry or exit, uh, those cameras are automatically uh, activated. So we have to make sure those views are good and accurate. 
Uh, and as we're moving around, we're also cleaning up any uh, black blind spots within the security camera systems, working with the local campus and with our technology department, make sure we get those uh, installed and in full coverage on the campuses. Along with that goes with uh, security system upgrades. So we're upgrading our burglar panels to make sure they're uh, uh, up to date, accurate, functioning and covering the entire building, as long with uh, fire alarm system upgrades, which is a fire code uh, requirement as we touch these buildings. We're upgrading all of our buildings to the voice evacuation system. So no longer will the fire alarm be the, the irritating horn and strobe. Uh, it'll be a visual strobe with a, a, a calming voice to help guide people towards their exits as we move through. Uh, and like I said, all of our projects have those uh, features in them, be it a renovation, a, a major new ground up building, or even as we're, if we're not touching it for any other reason, it's part of our safety and security upgrade project, which is done uh, basically a geographical area at a time uh, for each year through the uh, end of our 2019 bond plan. And that is what we've got. And then uh, is, at this point in time, is there any committee input regarding campus safety and security upgrades um, from what Mr. Foster has presented or what you all believe you'd like to see moving forward? Okay, once again, it's a, always open to dialogue at any, at any moment. So don't ever feel like you have to um, wait for one of these meetings to ask a question or have a comment. You're welcome to call any of us anytime and have those conversations. Um, okay, well, we'll move then uh, now to our final uh, item today. Consider approval of the Conroe ISD Multi-Hazard Emergency Operations Plan for the 21-22 school year. Yes, and back in our previous meeting um, is where well, after that is where I let everybody know that we would need some, in, um, some input and feedback regarding the current or the previous year's multi-hazard operation plans, because uh, one thing this committee has to do is provide recommendations in regarding updating those plans, and it's going to be on a yearly basis. Um, sent that out. I appreciate um, everyone that did reply um, regarding any feedback for that plan. There's going to be very minimal changes to it, just changing names, of course, of those that are on this committee, those that were removed, and we have new members. So all of that dates will be updated. And then really, I just added some tornado terminology in there. Um, sometimes there's some confusion between a watch and a warning. And I figured a little bit more information for our campuses was needed there. Really, other than that, it's just minimal minor changes to names and dates. And so at this point in time, we just need uh, the district safety committee's approval for the 20. And that should be 21, 22, not just one year. That's a typo on my part that was missed. So for this coming school year, you just need approval of the committee. And so then it can move its way on through the, the actual board. I move for approval. That's second. All right, second by Mr. Moore. Any conversation, questions? All right, once again, we'll, uh, all those in favor, if you wanna just write a raise a hand and we'll, if you are opposed, if you would just key in your microphone and make that known. Okay, uh, that motion passes. So thank you very much. Um, Mr. Martin, any, any further comment here before we wrap up? And looking, no, at, sir. looking ahead to our next meetings. No, sir. Um, of course, it's required three times a year. This is the summer meeting. So once we move back into the, to the next school year, we'll have to have another meeting. And if there's any topics or anything that you all feel that this committee needs to be tasked with tackling, um, if you guys can email those to me, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, and so then we can have some input from the committee on things that we want to bring forward and, and take care of prior to the next meeting. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for... Um, your attendance today, especially those of you that are on vacation on summer. Good for y'all. So uh, hopefully we didn't pull you away from anything too fun. I guess if we did, the good news is you're about to be headed right back to it. So uh, thank you for giving us some time today. And uh, we wish you all a very safe and joy-filled summer. And we'll see this committee back in the fall. Thank you very much.